What's wrong with it? I don't know yet. I've got to open them. Hey, Mike, how much money do we have in the kitty? Why? Well, I've just been up to Old Armstrong's sale, and that's not going too well. Gee, that's too bad. We ought to help him if we can. He's been pretty good to the Rangers. That's what I was thinking. Well, what's he selling? Oh, get with it, Chubb. His farm's being sold. Guess he's too old to work it. Six dollars. <laughs> I guess we're financially embarrassed. Well, it's better than nothing. And at least he'll know we tried. Look, will you guys mind if we poured our resources to a deserving cause? Okay by me. And me. Well, if we're gonna get going, might as well go now. The sale's almost through. Come on. Hey, you young devils. Come here this minute. Hi, Mr. Armstrong. What oh, are you oh, sweeping around after? Well, how's the sale going? Oh, pretty good, considering. Well, we've got a few dollars saved up. Thought we might uh, help it along a little bit. Oh, did you? Oh, that was a kind thought, even if it is a little bit late in the day. <laughs> Sale's just about over. You mean everything's gone? Oh, it's just about. No more than a stick or two left. Wait a minute. I wonder now, is, uh, is that old desk gone? <laughs> My brother Joseph gave that to me old donkeys years ago when he went to the city. Family heirloom? Uh, every inch of it. Joseph bought that when the railroad was still trying to find a way over the Rockies. <laughs> Take a look inside, see if it's still there. Okay, the thing. 1750 going once, 1750 going twice. Sold to Mr. Phelps for 1750. Thank you very much, sir. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's see here. Uh, next and uh, and final item. Uh, a fine old desk. Now, what am I meant for this antique gem? Do I hear forty dollars? Forty bucks? All we've got is six. Looks like we're out. Okay, thirty. I'll give it away. I think nice to see you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, six Mr. dollars. Are you crazy? It's all we've got, Mr. Brady. Six dollars for a pile of worm-eaten old lumber? Try three, son. Five. We came here to help the sale out. Look, Pete. Uh, Three fifty, and we're in business. Four fifty. Okay, it's your money. Sold to Mr. Peter Keeley for four dollars and four dollars. Thank you very much. Well, I guess that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And thanks so much for coming. We got it, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, well, well, good work. The desk. Don't you remember? Uh, what desk? The one your brother Joseph gave you. Remember? Oh yeah, of course I remember. Why shouldn't I? Oh, you, you got it, eh? Yeah, I guess it's pretty old, too. Oh, it sure is, boys. That's an antique. That looked just right in that 40 yours. Come to think of it, that's where it came from at the start. Joseph bought that when your fort was closed down as a trading post all long time ago. <laughs> Gee, that's terrific. Seems to me there's a story tied up in there somewhere. Oh, I, I've forgotten it. <clears throat> Wouldn't you fellas like to help me across the house? Yeah, sure. <laughs> told me you was dead. <laughs> Somebody was wrong. Oh, it's too bad. Why don't you leave an old man in peace? I heard you were selling up. Thought I'd stop by and see if I could pick up a f some of the old family stuff. Oh, why? I wanted to help you out, Uncle. Besides, <clears throat> some of that stuff's been in the family a long time. Huh? First time I ever knew you give a tinker's cuss about the family or anyone else. Whatever happened to that old desk, Uncle? The one my dad gave you. Why? I always had a fancy for it. <laughs> Couldn't have seen it more than a couple of times in the whole of your disreputable life. I guess that shows what a strong impression it made. Uh, is it still around? No, it's sold. Sold? Oh, it can't be. Uh, the sale finished yesterday. You're too late. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, but... Oh, I thought this go happened. away. Go back to the city and leave me in peace. Who bought it? How do I know? Give me a fair price. Four dollars. 
What more do I want? Four dollars? For that desk? Do you know what you've done? Do you know what was in that desk? Looks okay? Yeah. Sure. Oh. <laughs> well, it won't take much fixing. Just a little glue and maybe a belt with a hammer should do it. Hey, I wouldn't do that, Chubb. It might wake in the worms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Pete, we ought to give that old guy something. Old Armstrong? Why? Well, it must be pretty tough leaving Indian River after living here so long. I don't know what we could give him. Well, why not make him an honorable member? Honorary. Honorary. The only junior, junior ranger over 70 years of age. <laughs> he might like it. Well, why not ask him, Mike? It was your idea. Okay, I'll go right now. Well, let's fix this leg. Right. Now, look. <laughs> it goes over here. No. That's a swell car. Yours? Yeah. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm Charlie Armstrong. I've just been saying hello to my Uncle Pat. I guess you must have come up with the same. <laughs> I meant to, but I got my dates mixed up. I missed it. Too bad. We just made it ourselves. Got an old desk, last thing in the sale. An old desk? That's right. Who are we? The Indian River Junior Rangers. We're going to keep it at our fort. As a matter of fact, it came from there a long time ago. Well, that's great. That's just great. It's nice to know that it's in good hands. <laughs> I don't suppose you... No, no, I... I guess that wouldn't be fair. What wouldn't? Well, I'd like to make an offer on it. I didn't suggest this. But you see, my Uncle Pat and I are old buddies. I'd like something to remember him by. Well, I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask Pete. He thinks he's the boss. Uh, where is he? Could be at the fort. Yeah. I'm on my way. Thanks. Hi, Mr. Armstrong. Oh, hi there. Well, how's it look, the old desk? It looks fine, just fine. Huh. Say, I met your nephew at the gate. Nice guy. Nice? That lazy, good-for-nothing, self-opinionated, light-fingered, mealy-mouthed... He sounds like the black sheep of the family. There ain't nothing wrong with black sheep, boy. They're just different. This fellow's just a plain darn skunk. You didn't tell him you had the desk. Oh, jeepers. Away you go once and tell Peter. I don't know what that scoundrel's got in his mind, but he's up to no good, whatever it is. Go on, off you go. <laughs> Hey, George, do you happen to know the story about that old desk? Mr. Armstrong said there was one. Guess his brother got it when he bought the desk from the trading post. Must have been, oh, 60 or 70 years ago. Before my time. Well, sure, but... Uh, By at least five years. Was that all? Gee, you get around pretty well. <laughs> Ask Joe, he knows them all. Maybe this one ties up with a story my people will tell. But uh, it's much older. Goes back a hundred years, maybe more. The story of Ambush and Shingabis. Ambush and Shingabis, when Hi, they came... Hey, Pete, I've been looking for you. I guess I've goofed. How come? Well, I met Mr. Armstrong's nephew. He wanted to buy the desk, so I told him it was at the fort. I thought he was all right. But Mr. Armstrong said he's just a plain darn skunk. Just a plain darn skunk? Et cetera. Sounds a great guy. Let's go and talk to him. Want to come, Joe? Sure. Maybe I get a chance sometimes to tell you about uh, Ambush and Shingabis. Sure, later. Come on. Look at this. Easy. I think I smell a skunk around here. Look at 
that. I guess Mr. Armstrong knew what he was talking about. Just a plain darn skunk. Why? Why would he do this? Guess he was looking for something. Hey, look, Pete. Found a secret drawer. If there's anything in it, he's got it. Well, uh, too bad Mr. Armstrong can't remember that story, whatever it was. Let's go and talk to him. No, 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 no. I want to show you something first. Not far from here. Will it help with this? Yeah, it might. Okay. James McKenzie, agent at Indian River, murdered the 5th of November, 1860. A long time ago, certain men robbed a wagon train west from here. They stole the bullion wagon and came east with it. But winter was beginning, they had too little food, and they were being pursued. So they stopped here at your fort. It was a trading post in those days, and James McKenzie was the agent. He had two Indian companions. Uh, Ambush and Shingabis? Yes. The pursuit was closing in. So the man buried the bullion, but they were seen by James McKenzie. So they killed him. Ambosh and Shingabis escaped. The men fled into the bush. Maybe they fought among themselves, or maybe they were cut by winter. But no one ever saw them again. Joe, did Mackenzie leave any kind of clue? If he did, no one ever found it. Did they bury the bullion inside the fort? No one knows. When the pursuers arrived, Mackenzie was dead, and Ambosh and Shingabis had disappeared. Somehow this ties up with our old desk. Mm, I think so. Well, come on, let's go. We gotta get Armstrong to remember something. Oh, wait, I'll tell you about... How much bullion did you say there was? Well, it was supposed to be around a million dollars. And you ask us to wait? Come on. But i tell you about the... Uh... Secret drawer? I don't know anything about a secret drawer. What would it be in a place like that? Darn it, I'm an old fool. That's what Joseph told me. It was Mackenzie who brought that desk to the trading post. And Mackenzie must have known about the secret drawer. Sure, probably had it built. And if he left any message behind, he would have left it there. But how did your nephew know about it? Oh, my brother died three months ago. I guess Charlie found some reference among his papers. Yeah, he'll go after the bullion if there's anything in that drawer. Oh, can we stop him? Oh, don't try it. It's not worth it. It's too dangerous. There's too much greed in him. Hey, could we make a bear trap? Huh? Ah, it's too good for him. You don't happen to know anything about skunk traps, do you? So how do we fix the bear trap? Well, we don't want a deadfall because that kills. There are two other kinds of trap. In one of them, he goes down. In the other, he goes up. At this time, we let him go down. You mean we dig a hole? No, I mean just that. Then we cover it with small branches and uh, leaves and grass and make sure he falls into it. Just like that? Yeah, it won't be too difficult. But this is a big country. Suppose Charlie has found a clue in that old desk. Suppose he knows where the bullion has been buried. OK, suppose he does. Well, we don't, so where do we dig that hole? Listen, remember the date when James McKenzie was uh, murdered? November 5th, 1860. Pretty late in the year. Snow on the ground? Well, most likely. Why? If they went outside the fort to bury it, they'd leave tracks. Pretty difficult to hide. But inside, there were plenty of tracks anyhow. Holy smoke. Do you mean to say that that loot is buried inside the fort? A million bucks. We've been walking around on top of it. All I say is, I don't think they go outside. Don't forget, Mackenzie saw them, and Ambush, and Shingabis. So we dig the hole. Come, I'll show you how. You know how you make animals walk into traps? You make it a little difficult for them to walk anywhere else. Like this. We uh, make the trap here. Yeah. Now we need something. Help me with this. Where do you 
Put that over there. Now, if you want to get over from one side of the fort to the other, you can step over the canoe, or you can walk between these things, but it's much easier just to walk like this. And then... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, you better find some spade. We got a lot of digging to do. We do? What about you? Well, I'll come back in a little while and uh, help you cover it up, okay? Fall in. Yeah. 
at a point 11 paces due south of main entrance. Consider the face of a clock with your back to the center of the main gates. You are facing high noon. Now proceed 11 paces at 1 o'clock. I put this in a place where I believe it will be safe from the thieves but may be found by others. James Mackenzie. I guess he was just bumped off when he wrote that. He must have been. I guess he knew about it, too. Now, I'll tell you the story about Ambush and Shingabis. Not right now, Joe. We've got to get to Sergeant Scott. We've got a lot more digging to do tomorrow. Come on. See you later, Joe. Eleven. I guess it checks with this okay. Look, they couldn't bury it any deeper. It just doesn't make sense. I know, Chubb. Well, you better go down another couple of feet. Not me. Okay, Mike, it's your turn. Get moving. You could be the lucky one. Hi. Oh, hi, Joe. You don't think we got these measurements wrong, do you? Mm, I don't think so. Well, do you think they go deeper than this? No, I guess not. They wouldn't have time. <laughs> then something's gone wrong. You are going to rest for a little? I sure am. Good. Now I'm going to tell you the story of Ambush and Shingabis. Haven't you told us that already? Oh, well, not all. There's a little more. Okay, shoot. Ambush and Shingabis came back. After that, for a long time, the tribe was very, very rich. Next time, I guess we'll listen to you. Okay, Chubb, come on. We've got ourselves a pretty big hole to fill in. Whoa. 